So, look, the Ravens' defense is going to have its hands full with Saquon. He has led the Giants to the second-best rushing offense this year, 179 yards a game. The Ravens' defense, meanwhile, 12th overall against the run, 26th in yards per rush allowed at five per carry. So that is not uh, necessarily playing into their strength. I, I don't really have a more poetic way of asking the following <laughs> question. But the Giants, who were a team that I think most everyone, including all of their fans, thought were in the beginning of a rebuild, mm -hmm. are suddenly 4-1. and one. They're coming off a stunning win in London over Green Bay. And so I really think the best way I can ask this question is, D. Wood, are the Giants really good? Coaching. Coaching matters more in the National Football League than any other league. Huh. What Brian Dayball has been able to do with the parts that he's had on this football team has just been magnificent. He is, to me, the runaway coach of the year. And listen, I think it's too early to say that this Giants team is going to be a team that's going to be a playoff team or whatever the case may be. But the coaching job that they've done on both sides of the ball and maximizing that talent – there's no denying that coach staff is the real deal. Bartholomew, if they beat the Ravens on Sunday, hey, hey, there will be no way to ignore the Giants. Hey, pump your brakes, Rennie. I don't know about all that. We'll see. If it was a fifth, we'd all be drunk. But <laughs> I tell you, but I tell you what, listen, you, you, they've exceeded expectations. The fa fascinating matchup about this week is coordinator versus coordinator. Yeah. Because Greg Roman versus Wink Martindale, they've gone against each other. So he knows – you know, the nuance of this running game for the Baltimore Ravens. We talk about the running game of Saquon Barkley. The run game of the Ravens is unique, you know, unique like no other running game. So I, I'm excited to see how they use the intel that they have against each other. That's a fascinating matchup between two guys that should be head coaches in this league. How, how big a deal is this game? What are you looking it's, at? It's, this is a defining game for the Giants. Against a good team, the Ravens team. We know the Ravens are a good football team. They're well coached. And, and you said something about Dayball, the head coach. And, and me and Dayball were neighbors for about three years, okay? I got a funny story. I'll, I'll indulge with everybody. Go. So I go over to Dayball's house, and he's, you know, just walk in the front door. And to the right, he had, like, a little office. It was just like a normal uh, – it didn't look like an office. It was more so just like a, an extra dining room, right? Okay. And on the shelf, he pointed out, see, look, those are all my playbooks. And I look over, I go – Wow, this guy must love football. He had a row of playbooks, like playbook, playbook, offense, 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 on every single place that he's been. And literally, that's what he loves to do. He loves offense. He loves coaching. And you saw that last week. You saw that in the passion with him throwing his fist, pumping yeah. his fist, because he was so excited that he got this team to be in a spot where we didn't think they would be. You know, the last couple of years, the Giants, ah, ha, ha, the Giants. But now they look like a respectable football team. So that's why I think – this team is in the proper position to have a competitive football game with the Ravens. I'm not going to say the Giants have arrived, but I think that this is a good measuring tool to look at the Ravens. You look at the Giants, where they've come and where they're at right now with the coaching, and Dayball loves to coach. I could tell by when I walked in his front door. I like that insight. I really yeah. do. And, Dan, I, I, this, this NFC East is sort of your old stomping grounds. Yeah. You're surprised as everybody. Yeah, because right? it's been so long. But Dayball, see, to me, the remarkable thing about him is it's not about the playbook with the Giants, right? He's, he brought in Mike Kafka from the Chiefs Players. to call the plays. So Dayball sees himself, he wants to show everybody he can be a head coach. Yeah. Not just, he know, everybody yeah. knows he's a good offensive coordinator. So he's establishing, you know, the, the words like culture and all that kind of stuff that get thrown around a lot. But there's a difference there, right? And the other thing is, like, I mean, he's thinking ahead, like, the Bears thought Saquon Barkley was public enemy number one, too, and they committed all these guys to stop him. And then all of a sudden, Daniel Jones is running these rollouts and scoring 20-yard touchdowns. So, like, coaching matters. And there's no question right now that through five games, and look, someday Giants fans will be screaming that this guy needs to be fired. Like, that's just the way of coaching, right? But right now, he has changed things there to an extent that the team and its fan base can feel good on a level that it's been a long time since they have. Leave those words up from Hembo on the screen. I'm sorry, I literally said that as you were taking them down. But if you can put them back up, there's no better sign of a well-coached team than the one that makes the right adjustments at halftime and change. Look at their numbers. In their four wins, they've more than doubled outscored that was the teams they've played. A couple weeks ago, before the Bears game, I was talking to Dayball about like how they want to try and win. And, and the word he used was, we want to keep it grimy and get the game to the fourth quarter. Yeah. Because they don't, the fact of the matter is, like, they're, they're short their top four wide receivers, right? It's no insult to anybody, but the guys they expected to be able to throw the ball to aren't there. I think that's that Bill Belichick um, 
type of philosophy, right? Being around Bill for so long, most teams lose games and win them. So if you just kind of stay around, most teams will yeah. make a pivotal mistake when they start pressing. And you talk about his ability to make adjustments. That's key. Most coaches can't do that. That, that is an um, attribute that most coaches don't have. It's interesting. But the previous guy, they thought they had a Bill Belichick disciple. Uh, Joe Judge, that didn't go so well. Brian Dayball, right now, you said it, runaway coach of the year. Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.